Mammalian metabolism is the second most complex thing we've ever identified in the entire universe. Only second to the brain. All right, what does this mean? When you hear an influencer tell you that one pound of muscle only burns this many calories, or this is the only way to lose weight, or this is how everything works, realize they're stupid, they're wrong. What you're looking for is a combination of data, science, and anecdote, experience. That's the only way you're gonna get the right answer. In fact, uh, if you're watching this on YouTube, we're gonna post up a picture of all of the known metabolism interactions and pathways that we currently understand. In fact, scientists uh, say essentially that it's probably gonna take another five years with really advanced AI to figure it all out. That's how little we know about mammalian metabolism. So the next time you hear somebody say, reverse dieting doesn't work or building muscle doesn't really speed up the metabolism, turn it off, they're morons. I, I hate having to see this every time. You couldn't help yourself. <laughs> I had to. You couldn't help yourself. I was I wondering. But it's so gonna, simple. I was wondering where you're going to go with this, yeah. and I thought, oh, this. Well, is so where Doug, he's pull going. up the picture I, I texted you because I want you guys to see. You these, need to text it to me. I did. It's to the. It's just like a bunch everybody. of chicken scratches. Is what it looked. Like oh, to me. it's I these are the picture, known. Yeah. Um, these are all of the known metabolic pathways. Essentially, I'll send it again, Doug, just in case you're. So a better question is, well, how much is unknown though? Like, what if we had to put oh a, a number to it? Do we know fifty percent of what's going on? Do we know ten percent? Probably ten percent. Really? Yeah, or less. You know what the problem is? Is when you look at these pathways, um, and it's literally the, the picture that I'm hoping Doug will find uh, is so complex. Just a, a, an infinite amount of different. Oh, I mean, you got to zoom in on this picture and like look at, and this is what we know. And and we don't even know how they interact with each other. We don't even know how one necessarily affects another one 15 or 20 or 50 steps down the line. And then there's what we don't know, which is yeah. like this infinite sea. Oh yeah, I mean, look at that. <laughs> that's, what the hell? Looks that's like, yeah. looks like the subway system in Europe. Those are, I know. <laughs> that was, right. the, this is like us. we're trying to get around. <laughs> it's fucking... <laughs> <laughs> we're sitting, all the four of us just are staring at the tube trying to yeah. figure out how to get around like ah oh, fuck it just take the uber well, so, you know what make, makes me so mad because we'll talk about yes and, and i yes this is true like when we talk about speeding up someone's metabolism through building muscle reverse dieting how that speeds up the metabolism in combination we are relying heavily on experience and anecdote because there isn't a ton of data to support this but you talk to any coach or trainer who's worked with anybody for any length of period of time, they'll tell you, oh no, it's real. Like, you know, I've, I'm on, on average, I would get a person's metabolism to, to boost by 500. A thousand calories was not unheard of for uh, me being able to get someone's metabolism to speed up. That was not unheard of. It, trying to explain it with the current understanding of the metabolism, like good luck, but it happens like clockwork. I need you to explain this a little for like, what am I looking at? Like, oh, what God. is this like? The, so these the are all the, for, for this like is the like star? all the different pathways, right? So it's like, yes. if, if like a variable is thrown in there, it's a whole other pathway, yeah. right? This is like energy. You eat food. What happens to it? Okay. So that's what you're looking chain at. of events and, yeah. and where everything is uh, connecting. That's what okay. you're looking at. You know, it's going to be cool. Easy. So how much, how, you know, how far ahead do we get here in the next, say, five years with AI? Like, this is where an example. That's where what they say that's going to be required yeah, to, to understand this, is that we're going to need, like, some serious AI to go in and really figure this all out. Because, look, it's it's obvious. Look, Quantum computers. We, we, we could take, <laughs> you could do a fecal transplant and make a, a fat mouse a lean mouse uh, with that. What? What the hell does that have to do with metabolic pathways, right? You could change your hormones. And not change anything else. And all of a sudden, you become leaner, build more lean body mass. You could change your stress levels, your sleep. Mm. Um, I mean, you could have the same macros and calories, or at least it seems that way, reduce inflammation. Yeah. Do they factor in all the epigenetic factors Epigenetics, as well? like, come on, everybody, relax. Like, So I hate it when, because here's what happens with these influencers when they come out and say, no, 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 you know, building muscle is great, it's healthy, but it's not going to speed up your metabolism. Just move more and eat less. What are you doing? You're just going to get a lot of people more confused or worse, a lot of people who've tried that and failed because their approach was wrong. And you're just going to confirm to them that I'm not going to do, I guess I'm just going to give up. Like I've already tried this five times. I've lost 30 pounds, gained it back. I did the running. I did the cardio. I cut my calories. Just doesn't work. Yeah. And all they're being told is you lack discipline. You're lazy. That's why it's not working. And they're like, well, I don't, this is weird because I have a cousin who eats twice as much as I do, works at a desk and is lean. So what the hell's going on here?
we tend to do. we tend to make these points and then move on, but I've, obviously we're continuing to hammer this one. Uh, yeah, because people keep doubling down and making more stupid. Points. Yeah, not even that though, because normally even if someone goes back with back and forth with us, we tend to like whatever. If you guys are too dumb to figure it out and you don't care, yeah. but the reason why I think all of us are passionate about this in particular was because how life changing it was for totally. so many people. I mean, how many and we've seen it firsthand, like really transform people. Yeah, so, I mean, how like, many times did you get a client that was so frustrated with their weight loss journey because they've gone they yo yo dieted their entire life? They're they're eating such a low amount of calories yet they're 50 to 100 pounds overweight. They just can't figure it. They can't figure it out. And never once have they tried like fueling their body and focusing on building strength to see what that potentially could do for them because they're so afraid to eat in that manner. And yet when they do that, the benefits that they gain uh, metabolically from that are unreal. Right. And, and, and we can't quite quantify it. It's not as simple as for every pound of muscle, you burn an additional 15 to 30 calories a day because th that math doesn't math. I've done it enough times <laughs> that when we do it, it's like, this makes no sense. We added five pounds, but you're eating 500 to 800 more calories. Yeah, what's happening? This doesn't make sense. Now, I understand that there's other variables. That person who's now added five pounds of muscle probably moves a little bit more. They're probably increased, uh, you know, they probably increased their volume in their training with, without even realizing that it. That still doesn't account. I know. It, they probably sleep. I mean, there's like, a, there's a whole host of things that are probably also happening besides this one thing that we're measuring in this controlled six to 12 week study to say that, oh, it's 15 calories. But it, it, when you're when you're coaching people, you you have to understand that too, though. You, you have to factor that in. You do, and also understand why is this so complex, right? Why is mammalian metabolism so, so complex? Like, what is what's the evolution evolutionary purpose of all of these pathways and what's going on? Well, well one of the biggest purposes or roles there is being able to become more or less efficient with the energy that is consumed. Okay, why is that important? Well, for most of history on Earth, um, mammals and humans in particular, like we dealt with food scarcity. We dealt with periods of drought of, I don't have, and, and so what the body does very well is it learns how to adapt. Yeah. It can become more or less efficient with the same lean body mass, okay? You can, I've seen this happen too, where I'll move someone in a different direction. We haven't even built any muscle yet. And yet their metabolism seems to be speeding up. Well, there's so many different pathways. The body can turn some of those calories more into heat. It could become more efficient in other uh, methods by either making you move more, move less, or some organs are using more energy mm -hmm. versus others. Cells can become more thrifty right. or less thrifty. It can conserve uh, it and store it for later. Yeah. I, I mean, it's just, it's, it's very, very, very complex, but we, what we know for a fact is it's like clockwork. I mean, my wife is an example. When I met her, she was eating 1,200 calories a day. She was running three days a week. She was doing all these crazy circuit workouts. And after about a year and a half, I would say a year, year and a half of working out together, she took out all the running. So no more running whatsoever. She started lifting weights in a traditional sense, meaning no circuits, just straight sets type of deal. Slowly reverse dieted her to where she was eating 2,200 calories a day and leaner. Mm -hmm. And leaner. So for all intents and purposes, less activity, more food, leaner. And yeah. she didn't gain 15 pounds of lean body mass. She might've gained something like seven pounds of lean body mass. So, you know, explain that. So well, just another example of being science-based, but not science bound, right? Yeah. Just understanding that we, we know somewhat what's going on, but there's still a lot that we don't know. And if you've been doing this long enough, you've helped enough people reverse diet and speed their metabolism. Again, the, the math doesn't math. It doesn't make sense. It's, and so I, and, and I'm not going to try and explain why that is. It's just that I know I've done it enough times to see how, what a difference that it can make yeah. by someone adding five pounds of muscle on their what body. What about like, how about this? How about the chemicals that you can be exposed to? Xenoestrogens have been shown to increase fat storage mm. in, in some animal studies. And it's not hard uh, to assume that that's probably having an impact on people as well. Um, so, and there's a lot of stuff that we're exposed to that's different now. So it's not just, sure. it's not the simple move more, eat less. Oh, that's any potential autoimmune issue and yeah. gut, uh, problems that you might have underlying, like it's all contributing, uh, to how well you're going to metabolize. It is. Now, foods. if you're confused, right, you're listening to this, you're like, oh my God, there's so much going on. No, no, no. We're saying it's complex, but the solution is actually quite simple. Uh, feed your body properly, 
uh, strength train to speed up your metabolism, train appropriately, um, and slowly over time, you will be leaner by eating more food. You'll actually have an easier, uh, it'll be an easier process of, of, of sustainability, maintenance, which is really the problem. So if, you, if you're working in this space, the problem you want to tackle isn't weight loss, it's the sustainability. Everybody can lose weight, mm -hmm. but who can keep it off, right? Yeah. That's, that's, the, that's the real challenge. And preserve your muscle. Yeah. All right, today's program giveaway is MAPS Powerlift. Here's how you can enter to win. Leave a comment below this video in the first 24 hours that we drop it. Subscribe to this channel and turn on notifications. If you win, we'll let you know in the comment section that you got free access to MAPS Powerlift. We also have a sale going on this month. MAPS Resistance, our beginner strength training program, is half off. And MAPS Prime Pro, this is for correctional exercise, is also half off. If you're interested, click on the link at the top of the description below. All right, back to the show. Yeah, yeah, a little anyway. bit of a transition. Have you guys uh, seen the news on Planet Fitness CEO? No. Uh, fired. Really? Yeah, yeah. I think they, Why, lo they, they lost like a, uh, they lost like a okay. billion dollars in market share yeah, like overnight. Alarm. Yeah. And a uh, billion? Yeah, yeah. So hey, what why? Guess it. Yeah, no, guesses. You guys gotta guess. Fitness CEO, okay? Yeah. Uh -huh. Killing it, doing great. Right. They're doing great. But and initially there was like no one like knew why they why I don't understand. This company's been doing great, it's been on the climb for quite some time. Yeah. Fire the CEO. Any guesses on why you might fire a fitness the CEO? Because the pizza went up, so the free <laughs> pizza. <laughs> <now>. <laughs> the embezzlement. Huh? Embezzlement. No, not embezzlement, although that's a good guess, I think. Look up the articles that are coming out right now that are that are related to it. So uh party too much. <laughs> wait wait who did the ceo he partied too much yeah bro it's why you look shocked like that that is like so the space man yeah oh yeah just making Him money the, having the fun and, yeah like, that's like town. a dirty secret of the yeah, gym yeah. industry isn't it look uh, at look, see what you what you could pull does up you look me, like Doug. the bang ceo i don't yeah. know what he looks like actually i didn't look at any images what you got for me doug Let's all the things say he was blindsided and doesn't know why he was yeah fired so that was the now. initial that was the initial yeah. like uh talk was that had no idea was, oh he looks like he does lines of coke <laughs> off a stripper <laughs> tell me that he does Bro, not, tell, he literally dude, looks like he does bumps all day just long a little sure. bit of powder on his yeah that does look like a bang guy he's just missing the gold chain dude oh for sure he's partying 100 percent that's hilarious isn't that yeah, so funny? It, How, isn't it like people don't, a lot of people that don't know the kind of behind the scenes, right? With, dude, with fitness. The gym industry is crazy. But I mean, it's got to be something a little more egregious than that, right? Because like. I it, mean, if you're doing cocaine off the desk at work, that's not that. That's pretty egregious, Justin. Yeah. I think that as a CEO sure, of a yeah. massive company like visible, that. It's visible, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Justin's like, if you do it I'm quietly, saying, you're fine. Yeah, if you're, yeah. I'm not saying he did that. I don't have behind the scenes enough. party so, guy. Do you guys, yes. I mean, you guys remember the Christmas parties at 24 Hour Fitness? Yeah, they stopped them because the last one that I went to, there was. No, no. You were at the, were you at the last one? Yes. The one that ended yes, all? Yes, I was at all the right, last one. All right, so explain what happened because I heard all the rumors. I didn't so attend this one. So two times in that night, there was an ambulance that had to show up to the party. <laughs> <laughs> and and there was multiple times that I went to the bathroom and VPs and DMs were in a line waiting for people to do coke in the, in the, wow. in the bathroom stalls. It's just, you know, it's so Lower funny calorie. because- you talk about it's not this. Not offending his alcohol. Yeah. You you talk about a, a lot about. Or we talk about this in general for general population. The the binge, uh, the restrict binge relationship yes. that a lot of people have, yeah. and to think that these leaders in in these companies uh, would be immune to that. It's crazy. They no, it's absolutely worse. have this same relationship where you got to be tight on the diet and you exercise and you're perfect all the time. Party you time. Put, yeah. You put on this image all like yeah. of health all the time. So then you get that one party every quarter or at the end of the year yeah. to cut loose. And when they cut they loose, hard. they cut loose. Yeah. So I remember I went to one, I only went to one Christmas party. And I remember at the time, my wife at the time we walk in and she's like, what? It, because <laughs> the way that people were dressing yeah. was insane. It was like uh Mardi Gras. Yeah. You know, the way people were walking in, she's like, this is a, you work here? Like They don't dress like this at work, I swear to God. Yeah, the last one that I went to, I was in an all-white suit, and I had my girlfriend at the time, we didn't have very much money, we had just started, it was like in my early 20s, we bought, um, oh God, what's there, there's a famous wedding dress in San Francisco that you guys, a, a name, maybe Doug. Company? Fun. No, yeah, company. If you got, if I said the name, you guys would know the name, but it's a, a, a very- Did Dennis Rodman wear it? All the women right now are like yelling it at the at the podcast right now. Ah, whatever it is. Like it's for sure like a big name, right? So we we go there and she needs a dress for the party and she bought this big old, you got Jessica McClintock. Jessica, Jessica McClintock, is that name? Give me, give me that something like that. I didn't know that. I, yeah. 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 
Oh, so, yeah, that one. Yeah, I don't expect you guys to know those <laughs> names, but I know somebody listening will. Anyways, they're like really expensive wedding dresses. And, you know, we're young kids. We didn't have any money. She wore that white dress all night long, and we returned it the next day. Oh. <laughs> so bad. So bad. She leaves a tag uh, on? Yeah, dude. She tucked yeah, it in the tucked, back? Tucked it in there. I mean, it was like, I don't know, probably like a $600 dress, which was a lot of money for us, for sure, at that, that point of our lives. And we didn't have a dress or anything for her for that night. We were in the city. We were spending two nights out there. And uh, we went all white. We were all white out like we were going to a wedding. And that was the party where the ambulance had showed up. Now, one I only saw one of the, they were like passed out, vomited on themselves in the hallway because they rent what they would do is they rent out. I think that was like the Hilton or something that they rented the entire place out in San Francisco. And then like everybody has and you Hope can bring a guest. Rooms there. Yeah, yeah, you can bring a guest, whatever. Yeah. So everybody flies in, their family and friends. You have all these people in this company. You have a company that has tens of thousands of people that are working for it that are all flying into this. We take over this entire in, entire place and it's just a massive dance and food party all night long and it goes all night. And you have, your rooms are there. So people were just pushing the limits and yeah, two different people had to get rushed to the hospital, and that was when they finally said, "Like, okay, we this can't." This is the last one. <laughs> yes. Did you ever go to one, Justin? No, no. They cut all that by the time I got there. So, oh, yeah, yeah by time that and the the Hawaii trip. I was so pissed. Why they cut the Hawaii trip? That was money. Big. That was right yeah. after the. Um, Do you know I why they got a, a the bubble? Do you guys know what the the origin of that was? Mm -mm. The origin of the Hawaii trip. So I talked to. I want to say Ma Mastroff told me this years ago. So he was the founder of Twenty Four. Apparently. It's what was it? July was it? July where yeah, they give away? Yeah. Okay, it was always right. their worst month. It was right. their worst month. Yeah. So they tried July to drum was, up business. Yes, you know? and so they came up with this idea where they would give away a trip to Hawaii to a member. So the way you would enter to win is you every time you worked out, you would fill out an entry form, and then the top producers in the company would also win a Hawaii trip. And the okay. idea was if we yeah. do this, we can turn July into a better month. It actually worked. Sure. July went from being their worst month to being one of the top. Producing month, second only to like January and February. Yeah. I mean, you think of the brilliance yeah, of the smart, guy. Yeah. That would do, that. do you, I, do you I guys remember it. the, the, oh, is that it? Yes. Yeah. Gunny Sacks. Huh? That's the name what? of that dress company. Uh, Jessica McClintock did buy Why? it and uh, she's since passed on. She was 90 when she died. Oh, okay. Or 91. I don't know a lot about this kind of stuff. Yeah, I don't know. Mm. Random, it random fact. Yeah, dress it's it's not random. You know a lot about that this stuff. That was random. <laughs> 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 it's a lot. Impressive, big, Adam. Big dress guy. You know, big dress guy so. <laughs> did you win a Hawaii trip? You did, huh? Yeah, I went to all of them, dude. Oh, yeah. yeah, I went to Hawaii. I went to, I think I did four of the Christmas parties. I did Hawaii four or five years until it wasn't happening anymore. So yeah. the first year I, I couldn't go. And then the next year after that, and for the next four years, I went, that was my favorite trip. Yeah. Uh, that was a big deal too. I, I mean, it's funny. Forget that it was Hawaii and, and it was paid for. That stuff didn't matter as much. It was just the pride of you were sure. number one sure. in your position to get to go to that. And yeah. that was such a big deal. I was cleaning out the garage the other yeah. day and I found my box of, I still won't get rid of them. Yeah. Uh, your my, shitty glass trophies. Yeah. yeah, yeah that's shitty. All. They're great. <laughs> just because you only got you two You guys of got them. to go to Hawaii <laughs> and you got like <laughs> Christmas <laughs> track. Just had two. Just because you have the least amount of trophies. <laughs> <laughs> I got three, Such okay? Dick. Assholes. <laughs> <laughs> I have, so I have a, a very block. short window. Yeah. I have a In fact, my very first month there, I won. So this is 1997. So I'm an 18-year-old kid and I got, know, whatever, first place trophy. They misspelled my last name. Oh, really? Yeah, they, they, they misspelled it. They misspelled it. So I still have it, but I have a box yeah, with all the- like, oh, too exotic. All the yeah. trophies and stuff. And uh, my Jessica keeps telling me, she's like, can we throw these away? I was like, no. These are, I got to keep these. <laughs> you know, for these me, it was roots. really, I was there before and I was there afterwards, right? So you didn't have the opportunity to work there afterwards. Um, and it was really crazy to watch uh, the way that could shift an entire culture of a totally. company. And it, it really highlights how, how much we we strive for that that recognition in front of our Come peers. On, that's mm -hmm. everything, man. And, Especially you know, in a competitive environment was like that. What it has to it has to go down as one of the dumbest things that Dumb. company ever did was getting rid of Dumb. that. They when they did the million yep. the million dollar production award. So this was if you for people who sold a million dollars worth of commissionable revenue. So when you would sell a membership, some of it was commissionable, personal training, some of it was commissionable. When you'd reach a million dollars, you'd get this award. And it was like the million dollar club and you'd get a ring and the whole deal. That was a big deal. That was a very big, I mean, I got that, uh, as a young kid and I remember getting that and the, all the other people that got it 
had been with them when they were Nautilus, like way back in the day. So I felt so to, the, to this day, like that's the one I will never get rid of that. Yeah. That award right there. Well, I mean, that's my origin on the whole Rolex thing, right? That's why I'm such a, what the whole yeah. big deal about having those watches and why that's, why that's so important to me yeah. is because they robbed that of me. I mean, I'll never forget literally like making this goal. It was around this time. Of Wait, the year, you didn't right? get the million dollar because of that? No. So what happened was, so every year, the number one producer in that in 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 your position, they gave away the Rolex. I remember That's the that. total revenue for the whole year. I remember that. Yeah. And so that was and that was a big goal for me. Like going into the next year, and I said I, I set out that okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna win the Rolex this year. And so I committed to not taking a day off of work. I literally worked like six months oh, without yeah, taking a day off, this. and I was crushing. The like the next the second place guy was like I could almost cruise the rest of the year yeah. at the halfway point. And I think it was in October, September, September or October, and e a mass email comes out that says that uh, we're no longer going to be doing this. I was so fucking infuriated that I had already gone three quarters of the year at this point of dedicating my life to like getting reaching this. That I I emailed the uh, the divisional president, then got on the phone with the the VP, and like went back, and I was so angry. That not only did they do that, but then also like that they didn't even they didn't do something to like make me feel better about it. Like, I'm a young kid busting my ass, like sacrificing all these days to try and, and to win this award. I mean, you're talking about they a, give a, a gift card. A yeah. billion. They didn't back. give me anything. They didn't do anything. It <laughs> was it was more like a, a gas card. A sorry that oh you know that we, we time, t times are yeah. tough right now. The economy was doing anything, rough, yeah. and it was just like. Man, I'm like one of your top producers. There's, I mean, I'm, I'm representative one percent of the one percent of this company to not get like a, you know, something. I mean, the old the old divisional president would send me tickets to Warriors games and yeah. things like that. The like, old guys knew how to do that, and it would have been just like I think that the gesture alone would have probably made it sting less to not to not win that, but to be on pace to win that for sure, and yeah. then not, and then of course, so that was the beginning for me of like being obsessed. Did with, they like, stop at that point? Yeah, the million stupid. dollar producer, everything, award? all yeah. all the trophies, all the Rolex stuff, all the yeah. the Mont Blanc pens, all the things that they used to do for the rings, all the awards that they used to give to the employees for achieving these milestones. They completely eliminated all of that. Yeah, killed you know, the culture. Yeah, I know it's terrible. Mm -hmm. yeah. I, I got to bring up a, a cool, interesting study. Have you guys ever met somebody that? looks like you like like kind of uncannily you look at them like oh, all the time. Or okay yeah. does that happen all the time for yeah. you yeah. all right well, that's, yeah. that's <laughs> there's a lot of me out there there's, all right. there's a lot. Yeah. well so i read an interesting study this is really weird so doppelgangers right that's the term for when somebody doppelganger did i say mm -hmm. right ganger yeah. ganger or danger ganger ganger put the ganger in there i don't know uh, so, so when somebody looks better. like you obviously they have similar genetics this is what they're finding there's like similar genetics mm -hmm. they did a test on doppelgangers and they found that not only do they look alike, they have similar personalities, similar life choices. So literally, oh, that's wild. If you see wow. someone that looks like you, the odds that they behave like you are significantly the odds higher. Odds that you like them are high. That, that yeah, that are, they're significantly higher than if they look like if they didn't look like you. I thought that was very strange. That's weird. Isn't that weird? Yeah. So that's you know. So next time you meet someone that looks like you, just give them a high five. Yeah. Give, yeah. Ask them if they want to go get coffee they, or something. Yeah, give them coffee. Cheese. I know you like this. <laughs> I know you like cheese, bro. Because I do too. <laughs> that's stones. wild, right? Yeah, that is weird. weird. Isn't that weird? That's super. That's it, super now. Weird. That, so this kind of echoes the studies on twins, although twins are identical genetically. But you guys have read those studies, right? Where there's like twins separated, mm -hmm. and then they, you know, at birth or whatever, and then they run into each other, and they're like both married, like very similar women or husbands. They have the same job. They both have a favorite cigarette or a yeah. favorite cereal. Have you ever read those? Yeah, yeah. They're so weird. Yeah. It's so wild. I don't know if I think that's, that's like more fascinating subjects. or the random stranger who just looks like you having similar. Yeah. I think that's more crazy, yeah, don't you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I've never met anybody like 100% where that kind of trips me out. You've never been like, so if you're in a certain part of America, like for me, it was the Midwest. I swear to God, like every, I don't know, 20, 30 people, I would see somebody that looks kind of similar to really? me. It was, yeah, it was kind of creepy. You have a common face. <laughs> <laughs> it's that or a lot of inbreeding going on. Uh, spread our seed out there. <laughs> just got a lot of cousins. Yeah. yeah. It's kind of Genghis Khan. On like a lot know. of attractive <laughs> cousins <laughs> in the Midwest. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, yeah. interesting, the right? South. The role that genetics plays on your decisions and your behaviors and stuff like that. It's always a, it's always a trip, you know, to read that. Yeah, yeah. What was that one documentary with the triplets? Those dudes. Oh, 
Oh, you that guys was remember good. That? They it was not a documentary. It was like a movie. Like they made a movie out of the three guys. Now, what I like good, now what I like about that is it highlighted the power of genetics, but also the power how they were raised. Right. They all. This was okay. Spoiler alert! If you watch this, I'm going to give away three identical strangers. Three identical strangers yeah. separated the, birth. The nature ex- versus nurture. I'm right? going to give away a spoiler. As an experiment, they got divided as experiments to see how one growing up in a poor house, one in a rich house, one in a you know whatever. What was the influence of genetics or environment? The, this is the crazy. Now, a lot of things were similar, but here's the crazy part. They all suffered from depression. So there's genetics, but one of them committed suicide. They lived in a house with an unloving uh, household. Damn. So it was the thing that pushed them over the edge. Whereas yeah. the other two just struggled with depression and learned how to kind of battle through it. Yeah. Crazy. I can't remember how much that, who's the actor that there's a, there's a, a famous actor that we know that's in there that, uh, how true they stated the story. Is it, was it, was it very, because it wasn't a documentary. It was a movie. They did, I don't, I don't think they had a documentary. Did they? It was kind of like a documentary. I know it was a study. What do you call that? What do you call it when it's like a, like a movie that's based like a docudrama, a drama, a docudrama. Oh yeah. I mean, but then they did show the actual, and this was, the, they did show the actual, I know. That's what I mean. Yeah. Like it, did they stay true? Cause you know, that's, that's the one thing about those docudramas. Yeah. It's like, Oh, well, they, the, the, some the, of it's true. Like there was three twins. All yeah. the rest of the shit's made up there. Yeah. <laughs> you know, so like, well, well, the okay, depression and accurate. suicide of one of them was real. That was real. Okay. Yeah. I couldn't remember if that happened or not. Did you find it then? I think it's really more of a documentary. Yeah, that's what I remember. Yeah, you're yeah. slow today, I see. <laughs> Andrew, stop. are you working over there? What are you doing over there? Just are you stop. on Pornhub? What's going on? No, stop. Help, help a brother out over hey, here. Hey, hold on. Let me. It was a real study. Huh? So it, it was a real study. It was a real study. No, not the study guy. No, There's a movie it's a, it's that a, came out. It's a documentary, the, the thing, the three identical strangers. That's documentary. actually a documentary. documentary. Can you pull it up so I can actually see it or we can just yeah. guess over here? No, it's a documentary. I remember it specifically. I see it. There was a, there's a, there's a, a movie that they made off of it too. And that's what I thought you were talking about. Mm-hmm. So there's, a, there's, I'm not familiar with the movie. Yeah, there's a movie. Well, you're the one with Google in front of you. Maybe you can no. find it. I yeah, know for th- sure there's this, a movie. Yeah, that's the one I watched, and that's, uh, yeah, that's it right there, and that's the three of them. So is it? It's an actual documentary. Yes. Right? Yeah. Yes. And it's, uh, I mean, also by the way, can I just say this? Scientific studies. I don't know if they still like this, but man, studies in the 70s were messed up. The shit that they got away with. <laughs> yeah. With people is crazy. How do they don't you think? Hey, don't you think we still do really? Sh- bad shit like that we just don't talk about it probably yeah, i would think we do yeah, yeah probably we're just now finding out about mk ultra so yeah, that there yeah, you go that, that's pretty well but they got separated on purpose just to see how they would all it's crazy there was another study that showed there were twins one went to north korea one went to south korea did you see this one they were identical twins the iq difference was significant between the two of them same genetics one was far smarter they think it had to do with malnutrition because North Korea, obviously poor communist country, South Korea being a bit, you know, a wealthy capitalist country. And if you looked at their faces, you could see the difference the nutrition made. So they they look identical, but one looks healthy and a little taller and all that stuff. The other one, not yeah. as good. At what point do you think uh, IQ doesn't make that big of a difference? What do you mean? So like what, like score, like obviously the difference oh. someone who scores extremely low versus someone who's scores high, there's a, there's a drive there, but it's just like a, like a happiness you with mean money. in terms of like, your, I think about the, like the, the studies and stuff that we have around like making m- more money, right? Oh. Once you reach a level, yeah. then it's like, that's, then there's other factors that are far more important. I actually heard Elon Musk talking about this. He was talking about IQ and he was actually, and I think he said, once you get above a hundred, he goes, he goes, it's actually not that big of a deal. Mm-hmm. Not meaning that the person who scores 140 isn't way smaller than 100. It's just that there's other factors, hard work, consistency, discipline, yeah, like outlook. Yeah, 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 exactly. Uh, those things now play as much, if not a bigger role in your overall pursuit of success, right? Yeah. So w- at what point do you think that is? Like, do you think that where's IQ n- n- almost irrelevant at that point. Yeah. I, I mean, I don't know. I haven't seen mm. the data on that, but I would agree with them. Um, you know, I, I think also intelligence is also correlated with mental illness, um, anxiety, and I can't remember something else, but mental illness as well. So once you start to go past a certain point, you see more uh, mental illness start to play a role. They, they, they're they not quite sure what why that well, is. Well, isn't it too? I mean, you're trying to constantly solve problems. A lot of times when you're, you're at that level, like, I know I've heard Elon Musk talk about this too. It's just like, it's plagued with like, I, I feel like I have answers mm. uh, to, to help in this category and, you know, to to always have that constantly running right. in your mind like all day long. Yeah. Like it seems That's to be That's your dogs are really happy, aren't they? Yeah. Well, I, know, I just think too, like how often, how many times do you meet someone who's like really brilliant like that and they're socially awkward yeah 
And, you know, your, your social awareness skills are important to leadership yeah. and be able to run a company and things like that. So at one point it probably even works against you, right? You get so, you get to mm -hmm. a point where you can't get out of your own head. So it'd be interesting to see what, what they have as far as like, once you hit a certain point, it's like anything beyond that. And it's like your other yeah. skill sets. Well, you know, a lot of the IQ boosts that we saw in the 20th century, um, correlated with height boosts that we saw in the 20th century. But those had more to do with uh, nutrition, yeah. yeah, nutrient deficiencies that were then that was filled. the biggest problem that we solved. Yeah, dude, like people were people were like oh people were so short back then because they didn't get like nutrients. Yeah, and then so and, and like in my family, right? So my family from Sicily, everybody's kids. Everybody jokes around how the kids are so much taller than the grandparents. Like my grand, you know, grandmother, like a Sicilian grandmother is typically like four because like, they got fed finally. They're just tiny, right? They're <laughs> yeah. little, right? But yeah, that's what it is, and their kids all get up, come out taller and they, that's because of nutrient, nutrient deficient. Same thing with IQ that the IQ shot up, not because of anything other than the fact that they just were malnourished, you know, malnourished before and lead, lead played a role too. Oh yeah. Lead and gasoline. Yep. Actually, did you know they connected that to violence? Yeah. 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 yeah I remember that. Going from yeah. leaded to unleaded reduction in violence. Okay. So it was like seventies or eighty. When did they take it out of gasoline? Good question. I think Not in the seventies. Was it the seventies? Right? Yeah, they mm -hmm. figured that out. There was some some study that came out that like attributed. So Doug grew up with lead. Everywhere. <laughs> I did. That explains a lot, right? That's why he's so violent. <laughs> he's a lot so of dumb angry. friends, huh? dude. Speaking of uh, cognition and cognitive performance, so I'm so excited that Organifi did this. So Peak Power was the product that I helped uh, them put together, right? So this is like a stimulant based for people who don't know, like stimulant based product there's caffeine in it but there's other botanicals that kind of balance it out that give you this like euphoric energetic kind of high right so it's really good for productivity for workouts that kind of stuff pure was a product that they already had that we all love that is non-stimulant right but it's also a cognitive boost and you know you take it and you just kind of feel good yeah. and i was combining the two i did that this morning i always take pure with peak power because i like to combine things see what happens really really great combination well they put together a bundle just for you. Just for, yeah, the audience. Because I talked to them and, and they said, hey, you know, Peak Power and Pure go really great together. Why don't you guys make a bundle? They did that. So for the audience doesn't know, you can combine the two and you will see sounds. Uh, <laughs> yes. <good> sound. <laughs> Why didn't I have this when I was in college? You know, like uh, that would have been great to, before to study and, and. We had Jolt Cola. Yeah, we had Jolt. <laughs> yeah. They still have, have Adderall. Yeah. 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 No, Jolt I, Cola. I just got off the phone actually with Drew. He's, uh, you know, he's a, a new daddy right now, right? He just had his, his baby girl, right? Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Is yeah, he well, getting sleep? What do you say? You know, he actually sounds like it. I think that, uh, I think they get a pretty good system. I think he's got uh, pretty good support as far, I think he's got a nanny. I think, his, I think his wife has the ability to stay home. I think they have a oh, lot. Good. I think they have a lot. And then yeah, they're around good. family. And so, I mean, I, he just seems like he's full of joy. That's what it sounds like. You know, I feel like you could hear that in someone's voice when they have their first kid. Like you could just, they, they change, everybody changed. I haven't met anybody yet who has a kid who I can't, feel or tell a, a significant difference in just how can you not right unless you just you don't i don't know I, I, you have to right you got this little kid for the first time in your life you're you care about something more than yourself which is crazy because you don't realize it until you have the kid because if i say that to somebody who doesn't have kids they're like what are you talking about i love my wife i love my yeah. parents more than i love myself it's like just wait till you have a kid do you think that's totally more, different do you think that's more dramatic for like I, that was really that was a big thing for me right like and i know i was a very selfish person like i was openly that I was, you know, I knew I was very selfish. Yeah, you boasted about it. <laughs> I don't know about that. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. I knew you were self-aware. Yeah, I was yeah. aware enough to know that, you know, I, I was on a uh, a long streak of being a very, very selfish person, and then settling down and finally having a kid. Uh, that swing of for the first time in my life, recognizing like, oh wow, I truly, you know, love this thing more than myself. Mm. Like, and 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 actually felt that for the very first time. I've probably said that, oh, I love these other things more, but until I felt that, I realized like, oh no, I've never more than myself until this this moment. So, do you think that's more dramatic for some people? Like, that was such a big deal to me. Do you think some people that are like selfless people and that were Born to help others. I mean, of and course, I'm sure there's differences from like that's not person. the impact that they have. Yeah, but I mean, most people, I think, have that have that yeah. feeling. You're yeah. not a very selfish person, Justin. Did you feel that way? How did you feel? 
Well, first of all, I want to say I'm, I'm always glad to see like dog people when they finally have a kid because <laughs> it's so annoying when they compare them. To, oh, I have like, a dog. Child, yeah. I was a dog person like that. <laughs> <laughs> the most annoying thing ever. I just, one of my friends just, uh, he was that guy and then he just had a son. It's amazing to watch that transformation uh, and to see kind of that energy shift. But uh, yeah, I've, I don't know. For me, I I was just apprehensive about the whole idea of it. Like I didn't, I wasn't uh, ever think I'd be ready for it. So it wasn't like, I don't know that I'm like a selfish person, but uh, it, it was more just like, uh, I'm just trying to figure out like what I can do to provide and, and get myself in a good place uh, financially and all that kind of stuff. Like I was very much more of a practical, mm. uh, like I got married and then I was like, I know it's going to happen at some point, but like, then it was just like, bam, like through the birth control and everything. I'm like, Whoa, okay, here we go. <laughs> like I got <laughs> to figure this out. Yeah. Well, I, gotta, I don't know if she got pregnant while she was on birth control. Yeah, man. Wow. It was like the first year or two we were married. So when you got, okay. Total so surprise. I don't think I've ever asked you this before. So I, I do know that story, but then I never asked you like, so were you guys like, Oh, let's be married for five years. Let's travel. Let's do that. And yeah. Then what was kids. the plan? What was the original plan? Yeah. It was a few years in, like we were, I mean, we had talked about having kids at some point, but uh, it, cause she, at the time too, was like working like graveyard shifts and everything. And it, so it was just like, you know, we're just trying to like stockpile and, and get our, get ourselves in a better situation first. So it was like, yeah, it was like a five year sort of idea of like, <laughs> you know, at that point, like maybe we'll, we'll start a family and, and do the whole thing. And how, get a soon house. how soon after you got married, did you guys get pregnant? It was literally, we were like, oh my God, it was probably a couple months because oh. within the next year, like we had right away. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. So, Surprise. <laughs> Bingo. <laughs> I was like, wow, I guess that wedding dress had an effect on things. I don't know what happened, but <laughs> yes. it just, it was powerful. So. Yeah. So, now you, you were different. You were ready to start a family. You guys were like, let's do this. We, we waited. So this was my first, uh, my well, first You waited because you guys were in high school, well, right? I was, well, 22. I got married 22. So I waited. But uh, you guys knew each other from high school, right? Yeah, you guys yeah, dated yeah. in high school yeah. or whatever. So we waited and then we, we, tr we started trying. I was 26, I want to say. And then, you know, successfully had the kids. But then after, you know, getting divorced and that whole, that's a very challenging uh, situation. I was for sure wanted no more kids. Never again, not going to do it. I have my two, going to focus on them. It was just traumatic, right? Getting divorced and all that stuff is just kind of traumatic. And then, you know, I met Jessica and um, you just, if you open yourself up to the whole thing, the truth is not everybody's like this, for, but for me, it's like, I love family. I love big families. And so I, I made that step and I said, okay, um, I'll do this again. I'll do this again. I know it's hard, but I'll do it again. And man, I'm happy. I'm so happy I did. Aurelius was planned. Dahlia wasn't. But uh, it was just a pleasant, you know, pleasant surprise. Yeah, I don't know if I told you guys this. Before uh, we planned for Aurelius, we had a, like a, I don't know, I want to call it a scare, but we thought she might be. And at the time, we were going through some struggles because she was kind of like, you know, I think, you know, uh, if we should get married and maybe have kids. And I was still against it, kind of like, no, I don't think I want to do this. I'm not sure. She came to me and she was like, oh my, you know, I think I've missed my period for a couple weeks. My reaction, which told me a lot about myself, wasn't fear. It wasn't, uh-oh, it was joy. Mm. Like my initial, she told me that and I initially smiled and became happy. And I'm so, and she saw that. So she could see that that was, that was true. And then to myself, I said, well, that's an interesting reaction. I guess that maybe this is something that I, you know, that I want. So I'm glad I went. Did I any of you, are any of your siblings that they, they all have multiple kids? No. Right? You, is there any, like, cause sometimes in a my family. My youngest sister doesn't want any. Okay, I was no. going to say, because sometimes in a family like that, you know, one kid has an experience yeah. where they, oh, I want a big family. And then the other kid is like the opposite no, direction. No, so it's four of us. The My youngest doesn't want to have any kids. And that's been a challenge for my whole family. It's like, yeah. oh my God, how can you not? Yeah. And, and what, does she tell you why? Does she say, I mean, my sister is not having kids. Just doesn't right? want to. It's too much work, responsibility. I don't know. There's not really a lot of uh, reasons that she gives. And we respect her. She's a good person, very good person. I mean, she's um, the, she was the youngest, right? Mm -hmm. So you had a part of watching her get raised and you mm -hmm. probably recall all that. Is there an, ex did she have a significantly different experience than you feel like you I mean, you probably, have? right? I'd actually think that your parents were more chill and actually yeah, a better you, environment. She even. wasn't around little kids, I think, because mm. she was also in the generation of, uh, of that generation. She was in the younger cousin generation. So there were no younger cousins, at least not for a while. So I grew up, I was in the older cousins generation. Plus I had three younger siblings. 
So I was around little kids all the time. I was comfortable with little kids. I was always around kids, playing with them, younger cousins, whereas she never was. I don't know. Maybe that played a role. Hmm. I don't know. You know, you guys must drive her crazy. Yeah. I, can, I can only imagine. <laughs> I mean, I was the guy who wasn't going to have. I didn't want to say too much here because if she listens, to this, uh, I, I can only imagine. I so I I feel for her because I know what it's like to be in a family that has a lot, like especially like with Katrina's yeah. family who's huge like that like and everybody putting that pressure of like when are you going to have a kid? Why yeah. not? Why not? It's just like then I, then I oh, bet stop. it turns to a point too where you're just like fuck, I'm going to have it just to not have it. Well, <laughs> just because everybody keeps fucking giving I, me look, hard time. Re I respect everybody's decisions. Okay, but here's the deal: the number. This is a fact. This is this the data. Okay, I'm just citing the data, but the number one most regretted thing that people will say on their deathbed is not having kids. That's the top number one thing. With uh, women, it's like eighty percent. It's, it's cl and, and uh, actually, the data also shows that childless women past a certain age, a significant percentage, a majority, in fact, it was unintended. So it yep. wasn't that they said they don't want to have kids. It's that they waited, then they got their career, and then by the time they found, so, uh oh, it's too late. And so you know that's happening regret. more than ever right now, too, right? I, I mean, we've 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 pushed that off, and I forgot who was breaking it down. But they talked about. I mean, you think about this this movement, um, this feminist movement to empower women in the in the workforce and push that kind of narrative. I mean, they start doing the math like, well, okay, she's 20 years old. She goes to college, four, six, yeah. or eight. Gets an advanced career, degree. Gets, yeah, gets an career. advanced degree, gets a good job, takes another three to five years to actually climb the ladder. Now she's making all this money. And now you wake up, you're 32, you know? Yeah. I have, a, I have a niece that I've, wa I've watched it front row seat of Katrina. Yeah, because they're different. Absolutely than, beautiful, intelligent, yeah. kills it business-wise, and but wants to be married. But it's like, really, that was not the focus until 30-something. And then it's like, man. And then the, and the pool just gets smaller and smaller for women at that age. It's I a, know. It's difficult. It's like, tough. It's because we don't necessarily, as men, uh, we don't have that same you know struggle, right? Because we could technically... Yeah. One of the biological clock. Yeah, you factor. have kids. Almost, I mean, pretty much to the end uh, to to the day you die, as long as you're healthy. Well, fact, plus what, what, plus what? men will also marry across and down, where women will marry across and up. Yeah, so that limits it even to more. So too, I, I'm not gonna say too much because, uh, but I used to train somebody who was very successful, female woman. She was in her 50s, very successful, and she's like, I can't find. I don't. I don't like to date anybody. I don't want to date anybody. And so we had this really heart heart conversation. And I said, are you comfortable dating someone who's less successful than you? Because she was so successful that it would be very hard to find somebody, right? And she said, now I am. But when I was younger, no. Mm -hmm. And she goes, and it was really hard to find somebody. Who no, I mean, that was like, that's like my yeah. niece. I, I know that she, I know that's what she wants. She wants, you know, she's like, her dream is like a power couple, right? So finding another guy who's you know, as educated or more and as successful. And she's already in, the, yeah. she's already bumped herself up into the small percentage as it is male or female. And then finding a, a man that's that a around her age that also is not married, doesn't have kids. And that wants that same thing is it's just, it's tough, yeah. man. And the dating apps haven't made it any easier. They're, they're now showing that the dating apps actually have made it uh, less likely. Mm. Which is really crazy. Yeah, you guys know that uh, the there's a really good interview. Shout out to our uh, our buddy Chris Williamson. He interviewed that girl Cody Sanchez, who I've shared with you guys mm -hmm. a couple times, and they got into that and saying that that dating apps. She makes a point that she thinks that dating apps were one of the worst things that had ever happened to our society for those for those reasons. I just think that. I agree. I mm -hmm. think that you think that it would make it easier, better, but all it did was take us back. You know, you know what's weird when you look at the data on this kind of stuff? And I can't necessarily explain this. We could speculate. But when you look at uh, arranged marriages, mm -hmm. arranged marriages, you didn't even pick the person, your parents oh, success and your family. rates way higher. Yeah. Super high success rates and satisfaction. Huh? Oh, yeah. Yeah. What? That's so counter to what we're led to believe. You know, it, now, I'm not saying that's the way It's counter to what we're led to believe, but it's that when you understand that love is a choice, that it's not that weird to me because those people are choosing to love that partner. That's where I, w I was misled for the, I was, I was told or felt like when I was a kid that it's this fairy tale thing that it's just supposed to hit you and you're, I mean, it's, this, forever. it's this feeling yeah. that you're going to have and you'll yeah, know work, when you know. Man. And it's like, you know, it's a, it's a, it's, it's a verb. It's a choice. It's, it's an action. You are choosing to love something. It's and all understanding that empowers you to go, Oh, okay. Well, let me, and then you figure parents who know their kids really well, 
and know their values and the things that make something last a really long time. Go, okay, let these two would make a good match. And then if they're open-minded because that's how they've done it in their culture for generations, they then choose to love that. And then it goes to happening. Well, you know, that the incredible relationship. I had an old client uh, and I say old, like literally they were in their eighties. And uh, we talked about this once. And this is that when I was having some struggles or whatever. So I'd ask them questions about marriage. And they said, you know, when I was a kid, uh, when I was younger, I should say that marriage was a, it was like, we are going to do this because we're going to do life together. And really what it is about raising children together. And she said, and then it shifted to, uh, you're going to fulfill me and it's love. It's like this in love thing and we're going to fulfill each other. And, and they said, that's when it all went wrong because the way I grew up, they, of course, talking about themselves, it wasn't, it was like, oh, you and I, we like each other. We care about each other, but we're going to do this. We're going to go through life together. We're going to raise children together. That's what this is about. It's about raising children <clears throat> and having this family. It's not about you fulfill me. I fulfill you. If I'm not happy, it's your fault, vice versa. It was this really enlightening conversation. You know, th so that might be why the whole arranged marriage thing. And I really, and I'm not like technically advocating for arranged marriages, <laughs> right? But I do think there's something to, to, to learn from that, right? And I think right. there's something in the middle, right? I know this this conversation will always trigger somebody right now that'll be like, oh, I can't believe you guys are saying that. Oh, yeah. this is crazy. And, mm -hmm. But there's, I mean, if it's been so successful for so long, it's like what we talk about with the science and the health and fitness space. It's like, it's worth investigating. Yeah. It's worth yeah. Being open minded enough to hear yeah, about like what's it. what's in there that's working. What's yeah, what is yeah. what is working and why is it working so well for so many people? What can I what can I take from that and apply with kind of the the views that yeah. I have around that? And I think that's the most important part of that conversation. It's not necessarily like, oh, we should all go arrange marriages now. It's just like, okay, well, maybe not. But then, what is it that they, they've done, or why did it work so well? And I think it's the points that we're yeah, making. I agree. Is, mm -hmm. right, I'm gonna I'm gonna take a left here. I want to tell you guys uh, what I'm gonna be doing with uh, MPHormones.com. So I'm gonna be changing my strategy a little bit. So when we were at the Olympia, mm -hmm. do you guys remember the doctor's name that we were sitting with? We had dinner with him and Don. I feel so so upset that I forgot his name because I wanted to give him a shout out. It was a I don't uh, know, maybe uh, Doug can find his. I know I have it. It's um really smart guy. He's been working. In Dwayne, is it Dwayne? Mm -hmm. Was yeah. it Dwayne? Right? Yeah, Doctor Dwayne something. So yeah. let's find his name. So I want to give him a shout out. Anyway, really smart guy, and he was talking about the Jackson, Doctor Dwayne Jackson. Was it mm -hmm. okay? So this guy's been working with hormones and athletes and bodybuilders who are on the extreme end of that, right? For, for a long time, decades. And uh, this is just something that fascinates me. And so we were talking about like, well, how do you, what is this like working with these high level bodybuilders who are on all these crazy drugs and this and that. And he was telling us how like the whole idea is to keep them from not dying. And then after the show is to try to bring them back to equ equilibrium because they're all so messed up. Yeah. So we're having this conversation about that. And then we got into the conversation about like TRT, right? And I said, do you think it's beneficial? Because I've heard this before and there's a debate. Is it beneficial once you are on TRT to do a period of going off, trying to reset your receptors, your androgen receptors, and then going back on? Because what happens, and here's the explanation he gave that really uh, was uh, really powerful. Anytime you use a substance, that substance affects your body by interacting with receptors. And what ends up happening with the body is the body will downregulate re those receptors over time. And you'll need more of that same substance to elicit the same effect. So caffeine is an easy example, right? You first start drinking coffee, one shot of espresso puts you through the roof. Next thing you know, you need two shots, three shots. Now you're immune, uh, it feels like, to caffeine you're because- to 500 milligrams like me. <laughs> yeah, yeah, like Justin. Because your receptors have downregulated. And so what you do is you go off coffee for a couple of weeks, go back on it. Oh, now the magic is back. And he says, well, this happens with androgens. He said bodybuilders have learned now throughout the years because they're the they're the cosmonauts and all this. So they, they experiment with all this stuff that there's a like a, a sweet spot and just adding more anabolics doesn't help. You just get more side effects. So what he does with his athletes is he takes them on low doses for a while, resets their their receptors. So I said, do you think that's good for people on TRT? I mean, I know they're not we're not bodybuilders. We're not using the same kind of yeah. stuff. And he says, yeah. He goes, what, what you should probably do is occasionally try to go off, try to boost your natural testosterone through HCG and something <coughs> called enclomiphene, which is a, it's called, it's known as a selective estrogen, estrogen receptor modulator. So it, what it does, it tricks the body into producing more testosterone. He says, you go off for a few months, get your natural levels back up, then go back on TRT 
And that same dose now feels super effective. So I think I'm going to pursue this. I'm actually so going to do this. Are you okay? You're going to come. Are you going to do like Clomid or ACG? What are you going to do? In, in Clomiphene. So Clomid is Clomiphene. In Clomiphene is a version of Clomid that is less side effects and more effective at raising uh, testosterone. So I already I was on the phone. I was on the phone with the people over there, and I said I want to try this out. And so they're going to put me on HCG and that, and it's going to I'm going to uh, go off. And then I'll stay on that for a few months and then go back on. Well, because so, isn't it like common practice for like, if you're doing bodybuilder doses, right? You go through like yes. cycles, right? Yeah. But, but that's never talked about for just people like constantly on TRT. No. And this is a debate because there's a lot of doctors will say, you know, you don't need to do this. This is stupid. Just stay on the whole time. Right. Well, needing, um, needing and uh, optimal are two different things too, though, right? Sure. So, I mean, it's just like. Uh, I just want to do it because I want to experience it because here's the other end of the coin here or the other side of the coin. There's a lot of, the, some men, especially young men with low testosterone don't need to go on TRT if they do the protocol that I'm about to go through. Some oftentimes, and I was, when I was talking on the phone, I said, is this successful? I said, oh yeah, mm. if we get a 30 year old guy with low testosterone, we don't put him on TRT right, right away. We have him do this protocol. And they said, and oftentimes the protocol alone will boost them up, kicks yeah. them up. And then they don't need to go yeah, on yeah. TRT. Better, I mean, I, it, option, yeah. it reminds me of when I figured out like uh, how valuable fasting was for someone who was bulking. I mean, it was yes. like, it's this, yes. you know, you're constantly trying to defeat. It's like you desensitize. Yeah. yeah. And, yeah. and it seems so counterintuitive to, oh, you're trying to gain weight. You're trying to yeah. bulk. Go. How about you're fasting? Assimilating for, yeah, go fast nutrients. for 24 yeah. hours. You're like, huh? Why yeah. would I do that? Or yeah. run a week of, you know, a calorie deficit where you're low calories for a whole week. And yeah. it, it seems counterintuitive to do that. But I, you know, again, I've seen, time and time again, I've seen a lot of success, not only personally with myself, but with clients that, after I do that, they all we go back to the bulk again. And we always seem to lean body mass. Yeah, we pick up a couple pounds from that. We get a little bit stronger. They have an easier time eating and assimilating the food. It just yeah. you know, it works. And so it would make sense to me that even yeah. So I'm gonna I'm gonna pay attention to like what I notice. Do I notice a drop in performance? Do I notice you know? Do I feel different, better? And then when I go back on, is it gonna feel different? So I'll let everybody. Now, when you do, are you gonna pull off all peptides too? Or are you just talking Hell about with no. it? No, okay. <laughs> One thing at a time, Adam. <laughs> you think I am crazy? You try, hey, you want me to show you and think you is One step at a time, bro. Guys, Come on. Guys. I want to do yeah, one thing yeah. at a time so I can tell people. I'll back off the TRT yeah. for a little bit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll take all 12 peptides uh, still. I'm right. still on it. Uh, yeah, so you got to keep great. that pep in your step. Yeah, yeah. let them know what's going on. <laughs> Speaking of eating and food and stuff, did you guys see the giveaway butcher box, that we're, what they're doing right now for the turkey? Thanksgiving? Black? No. Let's no, 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 no. Doug, what is it? It's like. You I go to Butcher Box. From, uh, if you sign up Butcher for Butcher Box. Box, they'll let you pick a steak that they'll send you for free for a year in your box. That's my right? understanding. Yeah, you can choose the steak that's in your box. Any steak? Any steak, according oh, to box. what's on the list. So you got your normal Filet box for a year, huh? and you can add for a year. They'll throw oh, it in your man. box and no additional cost. Oh, that's this awesome. is like their Black Friday or whatever deal that's going on. That, I, they're so brilliant by doing I those. I think they they I hacked know. into something by having these like all these different. I, I, each time there's got to be somebody who's like, "Ooh, that's what I want." Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Saying, you know, when Butcher Box you came pay out, attention to trends like that, that was, for oh, sure. We'll when there. Butcher Box came out, they were highly criticized. Really, it was a subscription model for meat. Who, who did that before? There was that one company that did it. That There's that one. Yeah. There, what's the Omaha? Yeah. Yeah. Steaks. Omaha steaks. Yeah. But then there was like, oh, are you going to do this? But you're going to make it grass fed. You're going to do all this yeah. other stuff. Like it's not going to work. And it turned into, and it was all internet based at first. They turned into this massive company. I mean, that's the part that's most brilliant about to me is that if you actually start to do the math, when you add in the things that are for free, you're getting it shipped to your house. It's grass fed. The price is like competitive. Oh, you can. Yeah. You yeah. Can. I mean, you, you're not going to be able to compete with a grain fed Costco steak. But, but if that's you not buy, the point. Yeah, it's not the point. If you want, one of the complaints that people have when they go all grass fed on stuff like that is it's more expensive. You know, all organic grass fed stuff is going to be more expensive. And so to be able to buy it in bulk like this and get be able to get a reduced price and have it shipped to your house is like a, yeah. a no brainer. It's so right? different too. Like, cause they also have wild caught fish. Have you had, well, you guys, I'm sure you guys have, uh, you, probably not you, Justin, cause you don't eat uh, fish, but not, I'm scared of fish. Yeah. Do yeah. you, when you get wild caught salmon versus farm, farm salmon? Yeah. Wow, is it different? Farm salmon is like this. They must be obese. The salmon. color looks so different. Too. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. They're like it's like it's like, like, it's like 50 percent yeah. fat, and yeah. then the the wild caught salmon yeah. is like a leaner. Even though it's a fatty fish, looks so different. You know that was trippy for me. So in yeah. London, uh, they're they're known for their breakfast, right? They're 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 like, English full English breakfast. Yes, right. Mm -hmm. So they're, they're by the way beans on toast, 
for Americans who've never had that, yeah. sounds gross. It's delicious. It's gross. No, you didn't like it. No, it's not good. You oh, still I, didn't like it. No, it was oh, so I, good. I liked it. I liked the breakfast. Yeah. That was like one of my no. Why'd you eat it then? I saw you eat it. Just because I wanted to try it. Yeah, when in Rome, it right? yeah, right. Rome. It, it was good, go. dude. Beans on toast is good. I mean, I liked. I liked the way sure. they did their scrambled eggs. Though. That was yeah. pretty decent. They added milk yeah, to them, of course. I just went and had. You know, I'm Mexican, so I'd later. replace it with a tortilla. But it'd be per if that beans on tortilla. Oh, well, that's called a brie. The whole breakfast. You guys invented that. The whole the whole breakfast with a tortilla to me would be like would make it that much better. Not, not big <laughs> what do you guys call that? I'm a big toast guy for sure. <laughs> yeah. But what was what was interesting to me? No matter what restaurant or where we were at in the city, the eggs looked so different oh, over yeah. there. They were like orange. The yes, yolks. all of that them. was the standard. Yeah, it wasn't like just like one restaurant was like that. That's what was oh, interesting was, was that they eggs. were all like that. It's like oh yeah. wow, how much are eggs? I wonder why. Uh, yeah, I don't know. They probably give them uh, are they all free more range free range, range yeah, opportunity. Because, dude, that's how it was when I had chickens and they were out there eating grubs and, and whatever insects out in my backyard. And, like, it was, like, neon orange, like yeah. the, the, the yolks. Right. I, I mean, we had chickens growing up, too, so I remember that also. But I'm surprised that you see that in a, at one of the you know biggest cities. I know. You would think that it would be more commercialized and they'd be you know, pumping them out like crazy like we have them over here. So I don't know why what they're doing different over there. Maybe that. less mass produced. I don't know. Oh, mm -hmm. Crazy. All right. One, one, one more thing I'm going to add. I know we're going long here, but one more thing I want to add. I, I, I heard about this the other day on the Joe Rogan podcast. I couldn't believe this was true. And then it dawned on me how hypocritical and strange this was. So I think it was, I want to say Time Magazine put the this guy on the cover. He is like, I think he was an ex-Google executive. Don't remember his name, mm. but he's like this climate activist. Okay. And in the article, he said, quote, we would be so much better off if there were no humans left. Oh, oh my God. God. Okay. Yeah. So I and now that. when I hear that and I, everybody's like applauding him, oh yeah, he loves the climate. He wants all humans to be gone because the climate is somehow became their God. Yeah. I don't know. It's very strange. Humans are parasites. Now, Yay. Tra trade that. Now trade that with somebody who went up there and said, I don't want to kill all humans. I just want to kill all the brown people or I just yeah. want to kill all the Jews or I just want to kill. Yeah. Nobody would put them on the cover. But because he said kill everybody, somehow that's okay. What yeah. the fuck it is going on? Didn't Constantine so talk about him? Who was it that brought him up? I thought one of the. Speeches. I heard him on a podcast. I heard Rogan bring him up on a podcast. I thought one. Of, I thought somebody brought yeah. him up on the, one of their speeches. So, I thought, that's the only time I. Now it goes back to eugenics and all this stuff. It, what it literally is is this is Jonathan Page out did this talk. We'll post it uh, at the Ark um, convention we went to, where he talks about your top value becomes your idol, becomes your God, and all your other values will twist and morph themselves to serve this tyrannical God. So when you're a climate worshiper, there's nothing wrong with the environment. It's good value. But when that becomes your God, then it makes sense to kill all humans because yeah. everything else twists and morphs to serve this false idol. Yeah. So crazy. Well, what's yeah. funny is the more humans we have, the more abundance we have, right? The more we cultivate Innovation. our environment. Yeah. Which, you know, the environment left alone is wild and treacherous and violent, you know, and will kill us, you know, so we should just get rid of everybody. Like, yeah. it doesn't make any and sense. And who's going to enjoy the environment when there's no one here? Yeah. That doesn't make any sense to me. It's all it's all backwards to know. me. All right. We got a shout out. Uh, did you already shout out Jonathan before? No, no. Why don't you shout him out? Since Jonathan Page out? Yeah. Oh, I did a while ago, but we, yeah. we'll post this link to this, this talk. Uh, that he did. I think people should watch that for sure. No, I wanted to shout out um, the gentleman we saw in, that we hung out with in London when we went to that bar, the curling. Oh, the one that we called? Yeah. That was actually one. I wish we had uh, a screenshot of that moment when that happened when she called her boyfriend and- He froze. I mean, it was cool because one, we 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 don't have, like if you look at the- the way our, our our listenership are like by age, right? How they break up, like like the teenagers are the smaller. Like we tend to attract, yeah. you know, thirty five to forty five and older uh, uh, population for the most part, right? Of course, do we have some that are younger, but that's like their smallest demographic. So I always get excited when I meet like a young kid that like started listening to us at 15 or 16 he years old. He was 16 when he started. He was 16 him. years old and he's been listening for six or seven years. And when she called him and FaceTimed him and we were all on the camera, he completely, I, I thought the camera had froze. Like I thought, oh shit, the internet's not working. But he was just like, his mouth was wide open. He didn't say anything. Then he found out. And we're that, like, can you drive down here? Come hang out. He's yeah, like, I'll yeah. be there in 20 minutes. Yeah, yeah. Shot had down. a great time with that kid. Yeah, yeah. Real very, nice guy. Really, really cool. Really, really cool. Yeah. Another one of the and nice uh, his, uh His page is Eddie underscore Teddy 21. Is that him? That's correct. Yeah, yeah. So shout out to Eddie. Yeah. Thanks for hanging out. Eddie Teddy. 
Look, if you have kids and you listen to the show, you're probably very, very interested in their health. It's probably very important to you. Most children's multivitamins are basically candy with not that much stuff in them. Well, there's a company called Haya that makes a multivitamin for kids. It's not a gummy candy. It doesn't have all these crazy sweeteners. And it has efficacious doses of nutrients that your children will thrive off of. Go check them out. Go to HayaHealth.com forward slash mind pump. That's H I Y A health.com forward slash mind pump. And on that link, you'll get 50% off your first order. All right, back to the show. First question is from Rachel Atkinson. What do the different foot and leg positions work on a leg press machine? Okay, this is a good question because um, you're going to hear and see a lot of information about inner quad, outer quad, quad sweep type of deal, narrow, wide stance type of deal. The biggest difference with foot position on a leg press it has to do, and there's a difference when you go narrow to, to wide, and we'll get there, but the biggest in terms of development difference has to do with low versus high position on the platform. So low position, putting my feet low on it, I'm going to get more knee flexion and extension. Essentially, I'm going to get more quad. Legs high on the platform, I'm going to get more hip extension, so I'm going to get more glute and hamstring. Now, when it comes to narrow and wide, not big of not that big of a difference aside from, and this I do see value in moving foot position for this, muscle recruitment patterns. The strength that you build in an exercise has carryover to other ranges of motion, but the vast majority of the strength is pretty specific to the range of motion and the way that you're training. In other words, if I build lots of strength with a narrow position, I'll have some carryover to the wide position, but most of it's going to be narrow. So what I'm getting at is you probably want to play with all mm. of them and become mobile and comfortable. Don't even in a talk. Wide don't even where talk. do you put the value? Wait, on this? Say, don't even yeah. talk. You you know, I know. You, I was just gonna this? say. I guarantee Justin's never done any of this bullshit yeah, before. Yeah. yeah, I have the bodybuilder background. Yeah. I didn't fuck with none of yeah. this stuff. I, here's here's why. Well, you did different exercises where you got okay. It. So yes. let's this is let's all Instagram bullshit. Let's yeah. let's address this because I know this is going to get a lot of hate, right? Because there's going to be all these uh, these uh, biomechanic guys that are going to come on here and be like, "Oh, this targets this." More. Okay, yeah. nothing is going to build more muscle on in a particular said muscle than stimulating that muscle novel. And doing a leg press with 10 different foot positions in, out, <laughs> up, or down yeah. is is nowhere near more novel than doing a Bulgarian split squat, split squat instead of so that. So do your leg press, right. do this other one. Yeah. So, Agree. so yeah. if, if, you know, give Classic me the muscle squat, that something. you want to build, okay, or area you want to target to build more of, and I'll give you a exercise you're probably not doing that is going to to build more muscle in that area than any foot, you know, variation of the same exercise that you already do all the time. That's the part that I think is so dumb about the people that are teaching this and getting all these kids to follow this. It's like you're you're getting you're doing this leg press, which is already inferior to most other great exercises like the Bulgarian split squat or front squats or back lot squats or sumo squats or lunges or step ups or I can keep going all day long mm -hmm. of all these exercises that are already better. And you're messing around on this leg press, moving your feet or turning your feet in and out when you're missing out on an exercise that's going to pack on way more muscle yeah. by doing that because it's novel because you don't do it. Yeah, and even what I said, even with, with you know, working different recruitment patterns and developing more, you know, I guess functional strength or strength. Well, now you're talking about motion. movement. Yeah, you're, you're better which, off. Yes, exactly. You're better off doing a different movement than you are moving the foot position. This yeah. is, you know what this is from? This is from the bodybuilding space uh, yeah. where this came from. And this also, I think, feeds the whole like, oh, I should be doing different things, but I want to keep it easy kind of attitude. Because yeah. it's harder to go from leg press to a new exercise than it is to go from leg press to leg press to leg press. And it's very heavy on foot. feel, right? Yeah, and yeah. so that mind-muscle connection thing, and so they try to get creative with the way that yeah. uh, they can stimulate certain muscle groups and feel like they're getting some bit of, I guess, contraction or pump, you know, in these types of muscle groups. But uh, overall, like, worth. Uh, so here's the thing, too. In terms of, like, force demand, like, how much force you're actually going to produce to, um, you know, to, to do that type of an exercise versus like doing a squat version of it or the deadlift version of it or one, not even close on that. So uh, in terms of you actually building overall muscle and size and, and a substantial amount of, uh, you know, muscle development there, it's like, it doesn't even come close. Yeah. I will say this though. I don't know. Have you guys ever done
done a sissy squat leg press or a sissy leg press. It's actually a pretty, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. That's an exercise a lot of people don't do. Uh, it's pr it's more bodybuilder focused. I mean, it's yeah, a great, it's, so a, great, it's, a, great, it's a great way to regress sure. somebody who can't do a, a traditional sissy squat. Correct. If I have a client who, who can't do a traditional sissy squat um, because they can be a, a bit advanced yeah, to do that. it's your body weight. Right? Um, yeah, and it, and it takes a lot of control. It's a great way to regress uh, that movement to, to get the benefits that you get from that. Yeah. So sure. And, I, and by the way, it doesn't mean that uh, you've never seen me do a single leg press. It doesn't mean you've never seen me put my feet up high or low it's just that talking about this and getting the people that are in the gym that are doing this is like you're you're focusing on the wrong things like I, i'm not picking on the the bodybuilder who's been building for 20 years he's got and two is, and a half hours yeah gym, and he's yeah. training two yeah. hours a day and he's done every exercise that i listed a thousand times and he wants to play with his foot positioning to target it a little okay go ahead if you're already, already awesome and you're bored like yeah this is where you start right but the, the other you know 99.9 percent .9 of you out there Waste that the are following that guy or girl that's making the case for why they elevate their heel or to put, kick their feet out or it's like Go do the exercise you're not doing. If you it, it, that targets that area, and you're going to build those glutes more, or you're going to build that sweep on your quad more by going. Plus, and doing, there's exercises that are better for like you want to increase glute. That's activation. what I mean. I, I don't yeah. mean go do the, uh, some bullshit hammer strength machine that you've never done before. Go do one of the big movements I'm talking yeah. about. Mm -hmm. Go do the lunge. Go do the step up. Go do you know the sumo squat, the sumo deadlifts. The I mean, there's so many great movements that people don't do enough of right. that you don't need to be wasting your time on you know externally rotated feet on a leg press like come on totally. dude. next question is from katie massingale is it possible to increase bmi r beyond what traditional calculators say simply with reverse dieting and strength <laughs> you just want training. to hammer this don't I you <laughs> i picked this one on purpose this guy's like came like, in hot fitness, we're gonna finish this hot. tip is gonna be about this so i'm gonna yeah, answer more questions about this so bmr is basal metabolic rate so that's this how many calories your body burns and there's calculators online we have one mm. maps macro.com i think is the, the 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 url but it'll give you an estimate of how many calories your body burns at rest based off of your lean body mass. But it's an estimate. It is not accurate. And boy, can individuals vary dramatically. I mean, when I was, gosh, when I was a teenager, when I was 18 years old, to gain weight on the scale, I had to eat in excess of four to 4,500 calories, period. End of story. Like, it just wasn't happening. Now, based off my lean body mass and my activity, my BMR on a calculator would have said I should be gaining weight like crazy with that amount of calories, but it wasn't touching me. I mean, I know this because I was putting the calories away and I did uh, learn how to track in those days and it just, it just wasn't happening. Your metabolism uh, has flexibility with your current lean body mass. It can move all the way to super efficient or all the way to less efficient. In other words, burning and wasting calories or conserving calories and independent of movement, all that stuff, just because of the things that you do and the signs and the signals that you send your body. So the best way to use these calculators is like this. If you have no idea where your BMR is and you don't want to track for two weeks to figure it out, you could start here as your starting point and then work with it and see how your body reacts and responds. And it's probably, for most people who are average, not active, whatever, it's going to be roughly close but it's not going to be exact it's going to be it's going to be off for sure yeah the, the short answer is yes yes you can uh, these things are just an estimate um i i've ne i've used a ton of these things i've never had one of them tell me that i need to eat more than five thousand calories uh to in order to build in order to put weight on yet i've also eaten five thousand calories and lost weight so they're they're absolutely not a hundred percent accurate yes you can build it. This goes back to the original point that Sal made to kick this episode off, which is that we, we don't even, we can't even quite quantify what adding five to 10 pounds of muscle does for uh, your metabolism. We have good guesstimations on what that is, but it's good at best. Next question is from Rajiv Mittal. 
Is cold plunging post-workout worth the trade-off of blunting the muscle building signal if it leads to better recovery and therefore more frequency and volume? Okay, so here's what's frustrating about, because we get this question a lot, and here's what's frustrating with this, right? Here's what the fitness and health space does very well, is they take a practice that has value, and then they try to connect it to the things that that sell, which is muscle building fat loss, Mm -hmm. right? So fasting. Fasting is a good example. Fasting has been around for thousands of years. It's present in every major world religion. Every culture has practiced fasting. And I guarantee you 100%, nobody did it for fat loss. Or building muscle. No, yeah, nobody. <laughs> when, when people were fasting 2,000 years ago, people weren't like, I'm obese. I need to fast to lose weight. It was not for that. It was for the detachment. Yeah. It was for spiritual practices. It brings other values. Now, of course, what the health and fitness space does is they take fasting and they find a way to sell it through fat loss. But that's not the value of fasting. That's that's stupid. Don't fast for fat loss. Don't cold plunge for muscle building or fat loss or anything else. You know what cold plunging is good for? It's good for mental clarity. It's good for immune system boosting. Mm-hmm. And it's good, it's really good for, it's somewhat of a spiritual practice. You throw yourself in freezing cold water, you have to learn how to center yourself and calm yourself down. Okay, what are the effects on Muscle building. Uh, yeah, studies will show that it may blunt the inflammatory signal that a workout sends. It's negligible, by the way. It's not like it's like going to show pounds of difference. It's very negligible. Also, who cares? Mm-hmm. If you're fasting for fat loss and muscle gain, you're doing it for the wrong reasons. That's not what it's valuable for. Now, what this person asks is actually, I think, somewhat of a valid question, though. Can cold plunging in uh, increase the amount of volume and frequency in my training because of its anti-inflammatory effects. Yes. Mm. This is how sports teams mm-hmm. have used uh, uh, cold plunging. That's the only example. I mean, yeah. that uh, if you have double days, for instance, or you yeah. have a, like another competition that's um, going to demand that much more uh, ferocious activity, like you're going to want to make sure that uh, you bring that inflammation down a bit more. So now that we can train again, we can train again. Yeah. So, I mean, in that, in that case, if we look at it from that perspective, but yeah, to your point, it's, you know, there's so many other benefits health wise and physiology wise that we can get from cold plunging. We should just use the cold plunging for what it's best at. Yeah. And if you improve your mental state, if you improve your ability to center and calm yourself, I mean, what are the downstream effects of that when it comes to your fitness and health? Probably pretty good. Right. So this whole like blunting the muscle building signal, which again, it's not a huge well, because then fact. even then, like you may you may be able to like get better sleep as a result of like bringing the inflammation and how much is that down. And now well, let, let's let's argue the nuance there of like, and is my recovery better? Does that produce more muscles? Like you can go down this kind of rabbit hole of like uh, uh, semantics. And yeah. so it's like, there's so many other positive side effects. Do it. That's what I have to contribute. What I've, did you I've been raving. I've been raving about cold plunging for. I was going to say you're the most now. consistent. What did you notice the most? from doing it regularly the it, the energy right away so like it it's there's no cup of coffee or energy drink i've ever had in my life that even comes close to the feeling that i get after you get out of it so that and you do that with a you know a, a 2 to 5 minute plunge i'm getting the effects of what you know 300 400 milligrams of caffeine gives for me without the crash right so i feel better all day long and because i don't have to take that caffeine i also sleep better later on uh cognitively way sharper so like when we go into podcasts if i would do it before this like the mental clarity that i got from it incredible i just if i were to do it pre-workout so like man right before i would go for a lift if I plunged, I mean, that was Dr. Brink who got me doing the cryotherapy first. He's like, oh, you got to try this. Forget trying to do this for recovery. He goes, do this pre-workout and see. But some of the best workouts I ever had was doing that first. Wow. So, I mean, it's well, those drastic changes in temperature, too, and being like acclimated to be able to handle that better. Right. When you step in another environment, and there's sudden- there's something about, too, just the the mental discipline it takes to do something hard to say yeah, that this totally. sucks. For sure. Uh, I, I and then and and cal- being able to self regulate and calm yourself down, right? So that's uh, what Justin said, right? That was yeah. a big one for you. Was the stress your ability to manage stress was better? Afterwards. Yeah, honestly, to uh, to not do what I normally would do, which is um, tighten up and intense up and really kind of bear through it, versus like figuring out how to get 
into that autonomic sort of like I'm I'm relaxed. I could I could find my way to you know slow my heart rate to breathe. Uh, and, and this is something that too will translate really well to an athlete, let's say in a really high stress situation yeah. and be able to calm yourself. Like you're going to perform at a higher level. So, you know, that's something that's like a cause and effect of the cold plunge. Yeah, totally. And this is also cold plunging sounds cool and hip now, but some form or another of this has been practiced for a long time in lots of different cultures. Yeah. It's actually a staple in Eastern Europe. I've talked about this on the show before. Where there's, isn't there an area where they all, they all, there's an area that's, I forget what it's called, but where everyone swims and it's like super cold it's water. It's like a thing. Yeah. It's, it's like a it's traditional a, thing. That yeah. And then I, I brought this up on the show, maybe even a few episodes ago where like kids in certain parts of Russia yeah. at recess, these are children. They just jump in the snow. They yeah. put them outside in their bathing suits and they dump yeah. water on themselves as part of recess. And it's been something they've done for, you know, for a long time. I mean, so. you, I think the episode that we did with Wim Hof was incredible. Yeah. So mm -hmm. if you want the, the, breakdown of an hour and a half of all the benefits of why you should do it. Yeah, it has uh, nothing so, to do with fat loss, muscle gain. Right, that's right. I don't, think, I don't think this is even addressed. I don't think we talk that much about that at yeah. all. So if you want to hear all the different benefits from it, I mean, listen to that episode. Next question is from All Out Shell. Did you all train while in London? What did your nutrition look like? What new foods did you guys try? You know, there was a huge shift for me. And I think, Adam, you've talked about this, how this, you did the same thing. Uh, years ago, when I would go on vacation, I was always worried about losing my gains. I'm going to gain body fat. How, where's the gym? I got to keep making progress. What am I going to do? And mm. I actually made my vacations and my trips not nearly as enjoyable or it would turn into this, like I'd turn off my fitness and then go so far in the other direction that it was just, it was also not enjoyable. Then I realized that later on that you know, you're going to do this forever. I'm going to work out forever. Okay. I'm going to try and eat healthy for the rest of my life. They are moldable tools and I can use them to maximize the quality of my life, even if the context of my life changes. So when I go on vacation or on a trip, we went to London and we're at that arc event. And my goal is not to hit PRs. It's not to get more muscular. It's not to burn body fat. I'm not there for that. My goal is to meet people, have stimulating conversations, absorb the information, and also enjoy the culture. So my workouts really were about maximizing my mental acuity, my mental health, make myself feel good. My yes. diet was about enjoying the culture, but also managing the potential negatives that can come from eating things that might bother me. So I pay attention to that, but that's it. It wasn't literally, I, I wasn't tracking and got to mm -hmm. do my workout. My workout looked like 15 minutes. I would wake up in the morning. For 15 minutes, I'd go in the hotel gym and I would just do enough to feel good. So I had the energy for the rest of the day. That mm -hmm. was it. That's what I did. Yeah. You know, I've, I've thought long and hard about like how I want to communicate this message because I don't also want to encourage people not to be consistent with their training and their diet and, and to, and to do those things. Right. Cause I think that there's an, there's, an, there's some importance obviously to that. I haven't worked out in three weeks. Uh, so it's been, it's been almost a month for me coming up on since I've actually trained just because I got sick right before we left. And there's, it's been crazy since we got back. And so I just haven't got around to lifting, but I've modified, uh, you know, my eating habits and the other things that I'm doing, doing physical things yesterday, building with my son and stuff. And so I'm still active. I'm still staying healthy. Um, but I also think that's a testament to all the years that we have invested in building our metabolism, building our muscle, learning what our body needs, understanding that the, the whole health sphere encompasses more than lifting weight, building muscle and burning body fat, that there's other aspects of enjoyment of the culture and to hanging out with family and friends and connecting with my son and getting better sleep on this night. Like all those things matter. And I think that because just like somebody who's invested for a very long time financially, they can get away with blowing some money on here and enjoying things like that because they've been disciplined for so many years of, of investing that they can get away with this. And so I think that that's one of the, my favorite parts about being, uh, you know, an older man now that's been lifting for over two decades is I've invested a lot in muscle on my body yeah. and training and understanding what I need to do calorie wise to stay, you know, at maintenance and what does a surplus and a deficit look like? And that man optimizing my sleep or my relationships is important to my health too. And so when I go on a trip like that, like, yeah, I really don't, 
I don't really think about that shit. Like, mm -hmm. it, and if it happens, it happens. Um, like if there, there was a, there wasn't really a time where it made sense that we would go to the gym and we were going to work out and I didn't feel necessary that I needed to get up an extra hour, especially since I wasn't sleeping that well there anyways to go and try and work out. Like, ah, I just, I didn't, I didn't care about that. In yeah. fact, it would have taken away probably. Yeah. yeah. In fact, I was, uh, someone thought I was competing. So. <laughs> 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 You're buying so, two times. You see? So, hey, two uh, times. yes, I was approached by a couple of prostitutes that were in, inside that walked up to me Sal and, I and pay said, Said, oh, um, are you, hey, can you yes. for five bucks? Just, you I was really I was, just I was buying a, a Reese's bit. peanut butter cup and a Diet Coke, and she was right <laughs> behind me. And she goes, "How did you do?" And I said, "What do you mean?" She goes, "You competed." And I thought, "Oh my god, you think hey, you think I compete right were, now?" Hey, you were <laughs> beaming. He could not wait to tell us yeah, about this yeah. later. I was like, "Dude, two two people forget that they were trying to solicit me, probably." And yeah, I'm like, wait, wait, it didn't matter the fact that she made that that comment. Maybe you missed the second part of the clip. I just want to make a point too that I said it to the guys, whether they believe me or not. And then we were in the the lounge at the airport, and the the lady uh, asked me the same question. So I'm this like, is hey. by the way, that's this is three times now something weird like that's happened. You had the, the the prostitute said that the lady at the lounge. Do you remember when we were at the airport that other time? I believe it's called Lady of the Night. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you guys got is that the right. politically that's correct term? Oh, yeah. You mean the young kid that thought I was all hip? Hey, no, no, hey, this was my favorite one. We're sitting around and we're waiting for our luggage. Everybody's tired or whatever. And you get these ego boosts all the time. Yeah, just, I think God knows. Yeah, like you need. Yeah. And this kid goes up to Adam and he goes, what, what, what sport do you play? And Adam's like, what do you mean? He's like, you, you're a professional athlete? And yeah. Adam's face like lights up. I'm, yeah, like, oh, yeah. I'm like, shit, I don't need to train. Here we go. Dude. I'm like, yeah. taking another week off. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That was a good time. Yeah, yeah. so I'm, you know, I did though one one day. I think I did it because I heard Justin say, Oh man, I've been doing I've been doing some body weight stuff in the inside my room. I'm like, oh, you know what? I could do some push-ups. I did some push-ups. That was my lats were sort of <laughs> I was like, damn, you know I'm deconditioned right now. Shit ever. If oh, I get my, my lats get sore well, from you know, for me, I know uh, you guys, you guys don't deal with the same uh i don't know how would i label it mental health issues that i do but i, I need i it, it, i have identified it as very necessary it quills the beast well me, here's yeah. the deal i drive you guys crazy anyway could yes. you imagine if i didn't uh, use that how much i drive no, you, you guys need crazy? you need it dude yeah, yeah for so sure i mean for me it's a, yeah it's a constant kind of like a feel thing and uh i just I don't like sitting for too long. That's a yeah. huge thing for me. Like I have to have movement and, and thankfully we were walking a lot, you know, yeah. and, and that's the great part about going to Europe. It's like everything mm -hmm. is in walking distance and we were out and active. And so it didn't feel too, um, I guess I didn't, I didn't feel too much of this crazy itch that I had to get this crazy workout in. I got one good one in, but the rest of them were like these stupid body weight things. And, and really it's just, for me, it's like expressing my muscles. And if I ever feel like I'm, I'm weak or, or I'm like tight and stiff and it, it really, for me, it's like a signal of like pain, stiffness, you know, whatever it is like that, that kind of stuff. Like I'm like really adamant about getting my workout. Well, in. I have, other than that, I'm, I'm, I'm chilling. I get so scattered. I have so much challenge paying attention if I'm sitting for longer than five minutes. And if I don't exercise, then you, I know I would have drove everybody crazy and I would have <laughs> felt like I wasted my time there. So I'm like, if I don't do this, I'm going to sit down at arc. And I'm going to listen to two minutes yeah. and then I'm going to zone out and, you know, it's going to be was a lot of sitting in store for us. Yeah, I just, so I had to, you know. I just hope that we, I mean, I hope that we're a part of changing the narrative around what health looks like for yeah. our space. It's, That's right. For the longest time, it's been this obsessive, I want to be jacked. And I've already proven that self. Yeah. I've already proven that. Like, I, I, I know how jacked I can, I can get. And I got nothing to prove to anybody else. Like, I, I want to be healthy. I want to be a good father. I want to be a, a good husband. I want to be a good brother. I want to be a good business partner. Nobody highlights want, the maturity factor, right? In our and space. it's just, I know that it doesn't it doesn't do well on Instagram, right? That's not like a cool thing to to post or to show off. But like that's where I'm at in my life. And like, the last thing I would want, uh, I'm in London, like trying to see all these amazing things and enjoy an incredible, what an honor it was to be invited to that place yeah. uh, by Jordan Peterson and to be a part of that and to be thinking about what my biceps look like or my abs or <laughs> where if my protein, if I hit my macros for the day, like just listen to yourself, say that out loud. how stupid. Yeah. You know, right. Just like, this is, oh, it's man. like, you know, and, and I know that in our space, like that's what people want to hear is like, Oh, you know, how did you do this? And how'd you fit your macros? And did, did you get your workout in like, and have this like plan? It's like, 
No, you know, I, I, I've done my investing. I invested for a very long time in my life to be a healthy and fit person. And now I'm in a, a beautiful place where I can mm -hmm. go blow some money a little bit and not go broke. Mm -hmm. And like, that's exactly how I look at it is I had two weeks of getting, of, of splurging, enjoying myself moderately, not being irresponsible mm -hmm. and I go blow all my wealth and you know what I'm saying? Yeah. In, in one but week. If you're beginning in your journey, right? Like it's one of our clients that's out there different. and it's like, it's yeah. a different that's subject. Right. They're asking the us and we're at like, you know, decades of yeah. experience with yeah. this stuff and we know our bodies I, very well. I tell people like that, uh, just be consistent, <laughs> but the workout itself should be there that's to the biggest factor. enhance your vacation. So that might mean something small. It might mean, but if it's going to improve the quality of your life in that period of time, then that's what you should You also do. might be at a different place in your journey right now. If you're that client that we're talking about right now, and you've never proven to yourself you can put two months straight together yeah. and then you go on a trip, and a vacation yeah. hits at one week, get your ass in there and work yeah, out yeah. because get there's, there, there, there's something bigger than just that moment that you're trying to sure. accomplish. Sure. And, and that, that the mental fortitude it will take to overcome that, the sacrifice will come that it trumps the best thing you should do for building muscle or the best, like at that point, it's really proving to yourself, totally. can I discipline myself for a period of time, even with these circumstances where I got to travel and that per you got to prove that that's just like an investing thing. If you are just starting investing, you finally made your first few hundred dollars. You don't get to go blow it right away and then just go the other direction. It's like, no, you're, you got to still stay disciplined yeah. just because you're on vacation. Doesn't mean you you've earned that right to do that yet. And so when you ask me a question like that or us, where we've been doing this for a long time, you just- Well, you get a varied answer because you can obviously see what we all do is based off of how we see it. Value. I know, Doug, you probably, did you, do you worked out? Yeah, I did time. body weight stuff, yeah. some push-ups, some wall uh, push-ups, stand, handstands, yeah. um, some bands. Yeah. That's yeah. it. But Maybe you do it for the times. same reason I do because I know you do because it makes you feel- Yeah, I just, I, so when I went to Japan this summer- I was gone for two weeks and I didn't do anything. Yeah. And I definitely lost some muscle. And so what I did really when I was in London was just try to preserve what I had. Mm. I had no, I mean, it was like 10 minutes. You, you lost muscle for two weeks? I did. You really did? I did. I noticed. You think so? Yeah, I mm. felt like it. Yeah. You gained back so fast. Though. I gained, I, mean, I, I gained I, it back in like I mean, two I did too. Yeah. I, I definitely yeah. lost for sure. I mean, under eating protein. I know. For, I can't believe Imagine what they would have said if you were working I out. know, right? <laughs> yeah. Right? <laughs> might, have, might have got on stage. Who knows? No. I'm going to give you free yeah. services. Yeah. Where's your trophy? I mean, that's just it too. It's like, you know, that I know that I lost. Like I knew, I knew I lost muscle. I know I've lost some strength. I thought I got sore from doing pushups. Are you kidding me? Like the, for sure. I took a, went backwards, but it's like. I can afford to do that a little bit. Yeah. And there's other, but I went forward in other aspects, you know, I got, totally. I got better. Like, you know what I'm terrible about when I travel? That was really important to me. Like I'm so bad about calling my wife and making time, carving that off to like make her feel special. Like that's a big deal. Like I'd hit that dude. I hit that every single time. That's a big deal for me. Right. That's more important in my life right now that I get better at that thing. than I proved to myself and get in the gym. I already proven that shit. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So like you have to think about all those things. Totally. And that's the stuff. That's where my mind was at. hundred percent. Look, if you like mind pump, head over to mindpumpfree.com and check out all of our free fitness guides. They cost nothing and they can help you with most of your health and fitness goals. You can also find all of us on Instagram. Justin is at mind pump. Justin. I'm at mind pump to Stefano and Adam is at mind pump. Adam.